my project basically stems from my um, track two involvement in South Asia. Uh, I've been participating in these multiple track two initiatives for the last one decade or so, um, involving uh, former policymakers um, to discuss um, the causes of violence and escalation back in South Asia and the ways to prevent that. Um, so while participating in many of these conferences, it struck me that there is a need to go to the escalation ladder itself, the escalation dynamic itself as to why um, ceasefire violations happen between India and Pakistan and why escalation takes place between India and Pakistan. That's the sort of uh, historical background to the kind of work that I'm doing. But basically, I'm trying to demythify two things. One, I'm demythifying the popular notions about uh, why ceasefire violations take place in, in South Asia in between India and Pakistan. And secondly, I'm also trying to demythify the popular notions about why escalation dynamics takes place between India and Pakistan. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, these questions are de this demythification is important. Uh, the demythification about ceasefire violations is important because it's uh, generally and popularly believed that ceasefire violations take place as a result of um, Pakistan sending in militants into India and giving them covering fire to cross over to India, and it causes ceasefire violations. Then the uh, you know escalation ensues. That's the popular story. Uh, my research shows, and I've done a, a quite a bit of uh, field survey back in South Asia, and my work shows that's probably one factor. And there are multiple uh, factors within this larger um, um, gum, ambit of ceasefire violations that are taking place in South Asia, and local level military factors that, that there are. Moving on to the second demythification that I talked about. The second demythification is about why violence escalates in South Asia, uh, escalation dynamics in South Asia. It is normally believed that escalation takes place in South Asia as a result of a terrorist attack on India in one of the major Indian cities, or as it happened in 2001 on the Indian parliament, or 2008 on, on Mumbai, uh, the terrorist attack. So terrorist attacks lead to a certain political, military, and diplomatic standoff between two sides, and it escalates further. That's a popular argument. And I'm saying, well, that's not entirely wrong, but what you're missing out is the, the, the ability of ceasefire violations to impact credibly on the escalation ladder. So ceasefire violations can also lead to a lot of military, political, and diplomatic escalation between the two sides. So going back to my, uh, the, the argument about why ceasefire violations take place, uh, I'm basically making the argument that uh, there are a lot of autonomous military factors that lead to ceasefire violations. Uh, it is not uh, always politically um, uh, permitted or politically motivated. Um, so you have local, very, very local level factors which can cause one, ceasefire violations and it can spread vertically and horizontally and then lead up to um, a lot of escalation, diplomatic, political and military escalation between the two sides. Um, so in a sense, uh, from a theoretical point of view, what I'm trying to do is to look at the institutional argument and sort of um, use uh, Jeffrey Legros argument that you need to move beyond the mere institutional argument and you should look at the uh, institutional culture argument, uh, organizational culture argument rather. Um, so the organizational culture argument would say that you can't really say that it, organizations behave in specific ways, but what specific cultures within an organization um, uh, leads to a certain behavior pattern by this particular organization. So I'm looking at the two militaries in India and Pakistan, and I'm looking at certain specific cultural factors within these two military organizations, and I'm saying that these factors lead to escalation between the two sides. So that's basically the, uh, the kind of work that I'm doing here. Uh, I've done most of my field survey and primary data collection and um, the, the oral uh, history survey as it were. So I brought all of these things to Budapest and I'm going to sit here and um, derive certain insights from my uh, literature and interviews and that's basically it. I think there are Again, two or three um, lessons that I would say um, um, that can be derived from my project. First of all, it has very, very clear policy implications for India-Pakistan relations. Um, and I, I, I hope to publish this and I hope to publicize my research findings both in India and Pakistan. Um, uh, talk to various think tanks in, in both capitals and perhaps to also some policy makers. 
So I think in, in, once, in one very specific way, I would urge upon the two governments uh, to um, look at the, uh, the causes that I'm citing as um, the factors that lead to the conflict, uh, the, the escalation dynamics between India and Pakistan. So in, in, in some ways, I think I have, I'm positive that there will be some discussion about uh, the research findings that I will eventually come out with, and that will um, uh, carry to some thinking uh, or rethinking uh, in South Asia about why we have this recurrent ceasefire violations and killings on the border that happens uh, from time to time. Um, um, secondly, I think this also has implications for the literature and uh, research on ceasefire agreements around the world. Uh, there's a general belief that uh, if we have written down ceasefire agreements, uh, they are more likely to sustain than unwritten ceasefire agreements. Back in South Asia, we have an unwritten ceasefire agreement in 2003, which is specifically what I'm looking at. The earlier ceasefire agreements were written down once, but the present one is not a written down one. So, and, and I can see that uh, this has implications for um, the sustainability of this, of this particular ceasefire agreement. So uh, clearly, um, I will try and relate this to the larger literature on ceasefire agreements and the sustainability of the ceasefire agreements and try and sort of uh, um, add to the uh, literature um, um, in many ways on, on ceasefire agreements. And I think thirdly, um, um, the, the third insight, again, a more um, quasi-theoretical um, um, conceptual sort of um, takeaway would be uh, the implications of this, uh, of this research for literature on escalation dynamics. In the Cold War years, the focus entirely was on the um, central balance um, um, from a global point of view between Soviet Union and the United States. Um, so everything else was looked at from the perspective of how the Soviets balanced against the United States or vice versa. Today, uh, conflict uh, is not looked at in terms of how the two superpowers, there are no superpowers, there's one superpower and perhaps a major power. Um, so it's not looked at from that point of view, looking at it from a very uh, regional point of view. So how regional conflicts can have global implications, uh, that's, that's one sort of... Uh, um, um, sort of inside, uh, implication for the kind of work that I'm doing for um, um, the, the work on stability, global stability and, and, and international relations. Uh, and also I think I would make the argument in my, in my work that it is important to um, look at non-traditional factors uh, for um, crisis uh, stability, um, strategic stability and, and, and conflict escalation. Um, in other words, you should not focus only on uh, the presence of nuclear weapons. Clearly, India, Pakistan, India and Pakistan have nuclear weapons. It's a nuclearized sort of environment. And yet, um, our focus sometimes uh, becomes too much on these nuclear weapons and we don't focus on the non-nuclear factors, which have a lot of implications for conflict uh, in various, re various regional theaters and can have implications for uh, stability in the larger region and even internationally. So I think there are, there are multiple um, um, implications for the kind of work that, uh, uh, which is very empirical, uh, very uh, local in many ways uh, for the um, literature in, in many fields as well as for, pol as well as for policy um, uh, back in South Asia between India and Pakistan.